How's it going everyone? Jay here with LMR.com. In today's video, we'll be going over a quick breakdown of removing and inspecting the stock brakes for all 2005 to 14 S197 Mustangs. Visually inspecting the brakes on your Mustang is a necessary maintenance procedure to ensure your car stops on a dime. Whether it be a daily driver or an off-road warrior, if your brakes are not up to par, this can be a safety concern. We will show you how to remove all of your stock components within this video, including your rotors and calipers for the front and rear. This will allow you to give your setup a complete inspection to see if any of these parts need to be replaced. In this video, we're going to be showing you how to do the complete brake inspection and removal process on the S197 chassis. I would like to note that this vehicle is equipped with factory Brembo brakes. The same procedures can be used on all 2005 to 14 applications, but some of the hardware sizing can vary. Let's dive in and we'll show you how simple this one is to complete. Some of the tools you'll need are going to be a lift or a jack and jack stands, a complete socket set, a 3 8 or half inch impact and ratchets, a dead blow hammer, and some assorted pry bars. You will also want to make sure to disengage the parking brake. To begin, place the car on a lift or jack stand. Remove both of the front and rear tires. Starting up front, locate each of the caliper mounting bolts. These will be a 15 millimeter bolt. Go ahead and remove these at this time. Pull the caliper away from the spindle and using a small section of metal coat hanger, hang this up so you do not damage or stress the brake hose. Now you can remove the rotor. For anyone needing to remove the caliper completely, follow these steps. Slide a drain pan under the main hose connection on the frame rail. Next, using a 13 millimeter line wrench, break the fitting loose from the caliper hose. Once this is separated, cap off the hard line on the chassis side. Now remove the 10 millimeter bolt on the back side of the strut, and then the bolt located on the frame rail. Now you can fully remove the caliper from the car. Moving to the rear of the vehicle, remove both of the 13 millimeter bolts holding the caliper to the anchor. Once these are out, you will be able to pull this apart. Hang the caliper up as we did on the front end. Now you can remove your stock brake pads. The caliper anchor mount will be bolted to the axle flange by two 15 millimeter bolts. Break these loose and then you will be able to remove this from the car. Tap on the back side of the rotor face in a few spots to free this if it is stuck in place. To completely remove the rear caliper, start by placing a drain pan under the car. Break the fitting loose with a 13 millimeter line wrench to separate this from the hose. Remove the ABS sensor wire retaining clip and remove the 10 millimeter line bracket bolt at this time. Cap off the line at this time. Dislodge the e-brake clip and remove the cable from the caliper. Now you can fully remove the caliper from the car. Take this time to inspect all components visually. This will include the following. The caliper. Check for leaking fittings or any worn seals or boots. Brake pads. Check for thin pad lining or any cracks or damage to the pad face. Rotor. Check for excessive heat marks or cracks. Dust shield. Inspect for any bends where this could cause interference with the backside of the rotor. Wheel bearings and hubs. Look this over for any signs of wear or damage or any missing lug studs. Brake lines and hoses. Check for any leaks and possible chafing where something could have erupted. Associated hardware. Inspect for rounded off heads or damaged threads. If any of these parts appear to be worn or damaged, take this time to replace these. If everything is in good shape, reverse the removal procedure and tighten all components back to factory specifications. Inspect all of the rear components visually, just like we did on the front end. If any of these parts appear to be worn out or damaged, take this time to replace these. If everything is in good shape, reverse the removal procedure and tighten all the components back to factory specifications. 
One last area to inspect will be your master cylinder. Pop the hood and give this one a once over. Look for any leaking lines, a damaged or missing cap, or any cracks or damage to the reservoir. Also, inspect the condition of the brake fluid. If it looks dark or possibly contaminated, you may want to consider a brake flush after reinstallation of your new parts. Check out the link in the description below to show you a step-by-step -step process of how this is done. If everything is in good shape, make sure your fluid is topped off. All right, everybody, we hope this video has helped you have a better understanding of how to remove and inspect the brake system for your S197 Mustang. Overall, this one should roughly take you about an hour to two hours to complete. If you like this video, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel if you have not already. Turn on notifications to keep you up to date with everything we release in the future. As always, you already know, keep it here with the real Mustang enthusiasts at LMR.com.